Hi everyone, nice to meet you today. Thank you for coming to my talk. Like I'm Sergey, and today I'm going to talk a little bit regarding continuous integration and what my thoughts on it in the Android. So the main thing why I think developers have to use like continuous integration in any project that they're actually involved is because the only thing you should care is about your code, not what this code breaks and know how this code is going to be released and all that stuff. Mainly you're building code, so please keep, 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 keep your eye on it, right? So one sad story about myself. Once when I was working in my first company, uh, we were releasing some application for a big company which was outsourcing, right? And they actually, so we did several releases. I sent them their case store because they have decided that they will move on on their own because we have already released major features. And somewhere in the middle, they were contacting our company and I was not already working there with a the question, guys, maybe you have our case store because we just lost it. And as you understand, losing the case store means that you actually cannot update your application. Thanks God this situation resolved and everything was fine, but that was like the key point for like going for a continuous integration or at least storing your case store in, in a good place. Okay. So let's begin the journey, right? So, and for me, like the main thing about continuous integration is delivering feature without breaking your solution, right? So every time we go into do mer merging our code, we should be 100% sure that we are not breaking the code of our teammates or the teammates. The, the, it's cool if your teammates are actually sitting right next to you, but sometimes they are sitting in New York on, or Bangalore and it's going to be a nightmare, right? So, like, steps of building the application. First of all, you write code. I'm not going to talk about it. I hope you have some experience in that. <laughs> uh, okay, the next thing, you're going to test your code. After that, you're going to merge your code. And after that, you're going to build your code. And then you're going to deploy your solution. And let's start with the first things. It's going to be like testing and merging. Okay. So first of all, all continuous integration starts not with this sign, I'm sorry. <laughs> all continuous integration starts with the version control system. Uh, oh, by the way, regarding version control system, uh, my previous company, when I started working, we had the situation that we came, there was an interesting stuff. Like, first of all, we had TFS as our version control system, and I had MacBook, and Mac plus TFS is a nightmare. After that, TFS plus and Android, okay, we had Epium, and the craziest thing about that Epium was is that all tests written on the uh, Epium, like, was actually C sharp, so that was crazy. Do not do this. And the first thing you have to just choose correct tools. So regarding version control system, there are a bunch of them. Of course, it's Git, that's like that's TFS, or whatever subversion, Mercurial. Like my personal opinion, Git is better. If somebody thinks there are some better version control system, maybe they work for them. By the way, how many of you using anything else from Git in your project? Really? Okay, maybe, maybe you, ha you have some reasons for that. <laughs> okay, if you are talking about Git, it's also good to use some services like Bitbucket or GitHub. They have pretty cool features already integrated with it. First of all, you, have, you don't have to care about the hosting where you host your repository. And they get a lot of cool features like Jira integration for Bitbucket and all this stuff, right? So you can, uh, every time you're gonna create your branch, you're gonna, it's gonna be tracked in your version control, uh, in your ta task tracker, so that's also great. Uh, Slack integration, how many of you are using Slack? Great, and I hope you're connecting your Git repository with the Slack so everyone in your team can understand that actually the, somebody have pushed the commit and all this stuff is actually happening. That's really easy to integrate. Like, please do it if you're not. Of course, there is success management, that's pretty easy to understand, and the pull request that doing this crazy thing with the build server. 
yeah, and that's a Chuck. Look at him. <laughs> he's, that's his power. So, yeah, mainly regarding the pull requests and the continuous integration is that you can set up any of your build servers to actually run some automatic verifications of the code that, that's, that is trying to be merged. Uh, before it's going to be merged, and actually do the rejection of the pull request if somebody actually did some bad stuff without wasting your teammate's time. Okay, let's talk a little bit like Git strategies, because I'm really fond of Git, so... So, actually, let's talk about things as features. How many of you using feature branches? Oh, okay, that's pretty easy, good. <laughs> So then it's like a pretty simple concept, like every time we go into create a new feature, so we have like our development branch for every new feature, we go and create our feature branch, right? And that's pretty easy. After that, we are doing development of some other of our features. And after that, we are doing the merge. And the merge is actually the interesting part. That's where we are going to use our pull request thing, right, and a lot of other steps before merging that we're going to talk later. Before, before that, uh, how you're actually doing the merging, because previously I was doing it not good. <laughs> uh, like, how many of you actually using rebase? Okay, guys, who are not using rebase, I was the one of them, like, what knows, not using rebase. If you're not using rebase, your usage of Git is not complete, because what Rebase is actually doing, it's, it's going to actually pack your commits and then push them and then merge them into the, for example, development branch, like as a, as a set of um, like, uh, like one by one. They're not going to be interrupted by other commits that happen during this timeline. What it actually gives you, it gives you a possibility to actually, uh, if your feature really breaks something, you can actually do the, the like you can you, you can remove your feature from the like from from, the, from Git. Not even remove you, you can do the reverse stuff, right? Yeah, forget the word, whatever. Like, <laughs> okay, merging policies. Like, first of all, you're doing the pull request. That's pretty easy. After that, like, your pull request should trigger the automated tests on your Team CD machine. After that, you go into use the static analysis tool. How many of you are using Lint in your project? And you are not putting false to it, right? <laughs> in the build config. Okay, great. Like, it, it's it's really it's really cool uh, tool. So it can give you. A lot of a lot of information of what actually happening with your code uh, and what you are doing wrong. Then actually process with the code review process, and after that you can actually process with the merge. For the pull requests, what is actually cool, like it's the commenting stuff and putting somebody information that he's doing something wrong. That's pretty awesome tool, and like everybody, I've, who's using pull requests in the room? Okay, the other half, please start using that. Like, it's it's really it's really really useful tool. Uh, first of all, like, of course, you can leave the comments, and that's pretty cool stuff because uh, the other the other guy in your team that has written that code can actually understand what he, what he's doing wrong before he actually merged that code and that code passed the testing process. So that's that's useful. Uh, also, you can see the changes. You're actually taking a look at the div, not actually taking a look at the whole feature, like with, with the whole code. You, you're going to see only the classes that, that change. That's great. And also build on pull request that I have already showed with the Chuck Norris. <laughs> and okay, like easy merging. Like, so that's also pretty cool. I, I think you can do the setup like of pull request merging. Before, before doing actual merge, you have to do the rebase. So that's not easy for merging. <laughs> but after you did the rebase for that branch, then you can do actual merging. So regarding after test, I'm not going to take a lot of this. Like, first of all, there are a lot of patterns that we talked about during this conference. There are like model view presenter, uh, Viper, like model view view model, all there. All the idea is to just separate. <laughs> the main idea for me is to make your code testable, and that means that you can separate your Java code from the Android dependencies, what actually means that it can make your, 
unit test faster, right? So test your Java code separately. You don't have to start the Android virtual machine and all this stuff, so that's, that's cool. Use it. And after that, the unit tests should be fast. Like there is, you know, there is like something like teenager sex. It's always happening really, really fast and ends really fast. So the unit tests should be fast like this, or like this guy who is flying with his bullets, like fantastic Indian guy. Okay, you should. You, they they should be this. Like my uh, my personal idea. I've got my own. Um, uh, like timelines, and my timeline is like I want my unit tests running up to three minutes. Like if they're running less than three minutes, like that's that's bad unit tests. That it takes a lot of time. It wastes my time. Keep tests relevant. I had an experience when I was working in the team where we were doing the SDK uh, for the cloud-based platform, and, <laughs> and we decided that we need to do. Yeah, uh, we need we need to do Calabash tests because we are going to use a lot, a lot of the UI applications going to use them. So we want to implement the uh, we want to build a test application and actually to add that um, our library in there so it's going to be working. So we ended up with two hours run of the Calabash tests and. The, Actually, it ended up that we cannot finish the simplest feature like less than in two days because one day it took us to get a green run from that Calabash because it was unstable, it was flaky, it was falling every time uh, because you because of the environment actually, or you forgot to reload the device or whatever. Just keep that in mind. They should be relevant. Like, don't test the things that you actually don't need to test, and use spoon. How many of you knows what the spoon is? Okay, somebody is doing UI testing. What actually spoon is, it's like one more nice square library. Actually, it, what it does, if you have a lot, if you want to test your UI on several devices, for example, you need five to six support devices, right? You don't want to test all your features like on separate device because, you, for example, you've got two hours run and that means that you have to run those two hours run on every device. Spoon gives you a possibility to run those, uh, um, uh, to, to run this one set on all of the devices connected. Uh, really out of box. So that's pretty powerful. You can in two hours test on five to six devices. That's good. Also, guys from Estenfi uh, wrote a good uh, library, not even like good Gradle plugin that actually uh, gives you possibility to control Spoon right out of your Gradle script. So you can do a lot of good things over there. You can uh, skip some tests that you don't want to run on specific device or just uh, just select a specific device that we want to, wherever you want to run it. Whatever. And also, just sometimes automation is really overhead. Uh, because you've got, I don't know, that's a hackathon or you've got like a POC. If you know that there is automation exists somewhere, but <laughs> that's not the reason for you to use it on every project. So sometimes it's really cheap and easier for you to do manual testing. Okay, static analysis. That's the guy. He's really unhappy when you're doing this at the top. Like he's don't like abort an error, like because Lint want to tell you that something is really bad is happening inside your project. If you want to ignore some inspection, you can actually tell that you don't want to have those inspection. You can exclude them, or or you can ma mark them that they are not critical for you, and the build is not going to fail. And also, the, what is also good thing to have is like to have in like your own code style inside the team. So. It's gonna make you your code really, really readable, so that's great. On level on the code review, please look for potential bugs. That's the main idea about the the code reviews. Don't look for a style checks or something like that. That's why you have to automate that. Because sometimes we had a situation, we had a guy that every time we're writing uh, in Tom Tom, one more time, he was every time writing that we have to put final in our code. Like, and every time you're opening the pull request and you've got 20 comments from him, just put the final. You know, that, that's parameter, just put the final. That sucks. Just don't do that. Okay, uh, verify test coverage. That's also like a good thing. Please look that the code is really tested. Afterwards, like, run happy path. 
Whatever your application, you've seen that the, the tests are running, you, th you understand that, they, 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 that your application is working good, you think it's working good, please just install that application on a device and run the happy pass. It, it, it's really going to help you. I've, I've made my team to do that, and three to four times it actually removed some crucial bugs from our application just without starting, just from starting the application. We actually wasted five minutes and saved, I think, up to one day, so that's great. And also, just take a look that the person just do not violate the project structure. You have to understand that, for example, you've got the presenters and, you know, like, there, there, there should be some interfaces and there, there should be some naming conventions, there, there should be, like, some package structure that you have in your project. Take a look that the guy is actually understanding what he's doing in that case. Now you're ready to boy, merge boy, but I don't think so. How many of you heard about semantic versioning? Okay, that's a pretty good concept. What it's actually doing is like those numbers that you see on the software immersion sometimes means a lot of things. First, there is a major and a minor version, and you have to know about them. What they actually meaning by convention, the major version means that every time the major version is going to be upgraded, it tells you that there could be some breaking changes, and that the guys are saying that they are breaking support of the previous version. So. If you're having Google Play services and you've got a version 8, but you want to go to version 9, there, is, there could be a really big possibility that Google can break the APIs and your code can stop working. Minor versions is, uh, in that case, meaning mostly that you're actually doing the changes that some bug fixes or new features, but they are not actually changing the actual code uh, they are not breaking uh, backward compatibility. So uh, whenever you've got a minor version update, you can go. But that doesn't mean that you have to put pluses in all your dependencies in Gradle, right? <laughs> okay, so now let's talk about a little bit like release, how you're doing the releases, okay? We've got, of course, the master branch. We are starting the... And every time we start a new release, we are actually... Uh, getting into development, whatever, like, right? So we build in new features, we have already talked about it. But what about hotfix? Because, look, if we are talking about like something that's happening inside the, during the release and we understanding that there is something that had been broken in our build and we didn't found it out like in time, right? So, and we've got already in the development a lot of not fully built features. We need to build a hotfix, how it's going to flow. So, that in that case, you go going to build a separate feature branch that's going to come from the master branch. You're going to do the fix. After that, you go into merge it into master branch and proceed with all the release procedures. And after that, you go into pull it on the dev and then in all the feature branches that you already have. So in that case, it's pretty easy for you to isolate your like working uh, current working version with the hotfix version. So that's cool. And afterwards, like after you're doing release, so it's pretty much the same thing as a hotfix, but you're doing the request from dev to master, not from hotfix branch, right? And okay, that's a Bugatti. That's a pretty costly car. The thing I'm talking about sometimes could be also pretty costly. So also just keep in mind that not every time you actually have to use all those things. Let's talk about something building and deploying. Right, build server. There are a lot of them. There's Jenkins, there is Travis. How many of you, by the way, are using Travis? That's great. It's 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 pretty cool one. I actually like it, but but not for all the things, it's mainly good for Java. <laughs> if you're not building Java, in my case, I had a .NET, so <laughs> sometimes it could be really tricky. <laughs> yeah, of course, there is a TFS. By the way, they have a really good support nowadays for the Android. They can actually do a release to a Google Play. They have uh, like a st a build steps like in inside the TFS, pretty amazing for Microsoft. Of course, there are some tools from the uh, uh, how them the, the guys who are developing the Jira? I think they're called Bamboo. Uh, it's it's also like pretty cool cool one. But 
I didn't try it yet, so maybe maybe it's a good one. And of course, there is a Team CD uh, from JetBrains. Uh, okay, there is. I personally use two of them, like Jenkins and Team CD. At the end, I like Team CD, and I'm going to tell you why. First of all, like Jenkins is open source, like that's a good thing, right? Because you can understand what's happening inside it. You can do the, some, some changes if you actually need it. Uh, the second thing is plugging. Everything you actually wanted to do, like the Jenkins community already did, and you can find all those plugins on their, in their repos. They're pretty easy to install, so whatever. It's free. You don't have to pay for that any money, so that's also pretty cool. The other thing is poor Git support. First of all, out of box, it doesn't support Git. You have to put the Git plugin. Then a lot of the things, fancy things that you want to do, for example, for Git triggers, for example, whether you want to do the trigger on a pull request, whether you want to do the trigger on a specific branch, uh, whether you want to do the, the, the trigger on tag, uh, like uh, Team C, uh, from Jenkins does not support it out of the box. You have to add another and another and another and another plugin in that case. Like that was, I think, a year and a half ago. Maybe they currently have one big plugin. Plugins sometimes, as it's open source, somebody forget to put the commit, or they got a babies and they just don't put that much effort in the code. So there are a lot of bugs. Nobody is supporting them. That, that's a poor thing. Like no default support for build agent. Like what I like from a team city, that by default it's really easy to set up like a build agent infrastructure. Like on a uh, on the Jenkins, the whole installation of the Jenkins and actually setting up those like build engines is like pretty tricky. So I don't actually like it. On team city, it's easy to set up. Whenever you are using the plugins in, in Jenkins, everything is already there in the Team City. You don't have to, to care about it. It supports Gradle out of box, it supports Git out of box, it supports really good Git out of box. <laughs> it also knows a lot of the, it has a lot of good triggers already implemented. You can actually write the, some sort of scripts inside the console for build configuration in Team City. That's also pretty handy when in Gradle, in, in Jenkins, you have to put the, them as a separate files, and then every time you want to review what's happening inside them, you have to go to the repository. That's not that easy. Script supports, I've already said about it, like build agents, really cool stuff. Like We'll talk about it a little bit later. Uh, variety of build triggers, like I personally use two of them. That's like you can do it by schedule or you can do it like by VCS commit, whatever. Like and on that part, like uh, uh, you, you 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 can do a lot of good thing over here. Like VCS support, Git support, uh, the Team CD supports all out of box. Whenever you are not using Git. You can always use Team CD because it's already there. Your VCS is already there, definitely. Remote test run and actually remote building, that's also a cool feature. If you're using IntelliJ IDEA, you can install the plugin for a Team CD, set up your server port, uh, your server address, and your login. And afterwards, you can actually build from the Android Studio and run your tests on the actual build machine. You're not going to run them locally. So that's pretty easy if you, for example, don't have all the setup of the environment uh, for running the tests on your local machine. You're working from home, whatever. In that case, it, working out of box, it's, it's, it's cool, really. You can, you can try it. You, you have to pay for it, but that's not actually true. There is like a free version. With this free, free version, you have 20 builds configuration, and you've got three agents. They are for free. And if you're using this license, so you have like 20 builds configurations, three agents by default, that's pretty much enough. For those who are using Travis, it's actually pretty much enough, I think. Uh, okay, Team City build configuration. Like, it consists with several things, right? Like, first of all, you have to add roots. In Team City, what is actually cool, you can add two roots into one build configuration. For example, I had a situation that I need to release 45 different flavors of my application on, on the Play Store, and the configuration for those uh, be, uh, for the for those uh, mm, uh, for those 
applications uh, were like on a separate Git repository. So that what it actually means, I have to do the pool for two different repositories, and after that, like do the merging in one folder, and after that, do, proceed with the automated release. Uh, so it was pretty easy for me to add to attach another VCS root without any problem on the team CD. It gave me out of box, so it, it took me like one minute. That's great. Second thing, like the build triggers, I talk a little about, about, about them, what they're actually doing. Here you are describing what is actually go, how your, and when your build is gonna be actually started. And then there is like a build steps, there you're actually describing what's going to happen inside your, during the build time. You can run the Gradle, you can run the, I don't know, like whenever, whenever script you want, it's gonna be bash, bash script, like e, 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 even, even PowerShell script, it, it supports it out of the box, it's also great. And after that, like you, you have to put like some failure conditions when you, your job is going to be like considered failure and whatever. And after that, like there is like an artifact, like every to be, every job, every, every after every time your uh, build configuration is going to be run, there you're gonna ha you're gonna have uh, artifacts. This, those artifacts usually this could be like uh, test results. It could be like your APK files that you can download, right? So whatever, that's pretty useful, and you can store them as a history. So that's cool. There are some things uh, like uh, for Team City, like build configuration. I've talked about them mostly, so I'm gonna skip it. Uh, bum bum. Version naming, like a little bit of Gradle. That's a pretty simple one. I, ho I hope. How many of you? knows what the Gradle properties are. Okay, so as you can see here um, at the top, I have like major version, minor version, bug version, and they are coming as int. And where they are coming from? They are coming from something like Gradle properties. And the Gradle properties is a really powerful concept inside the great build system. Build system. What they are actually meaning that during running your uh, build commands in the command line, you can actually pass those uh, version name, minor version, and bug version. So what that actually means that you can write a script inside your build server that's going to set those variables as you want during the build time. So that's that's cool. That's some examples some examples that you can actually use. So there is like a Gradle properties file that's going to be stored inside the root of your project, where you can put some default values for it. But whenever you're going to build it, you can change it as you want. Also. Who is no? Who knows what the build config is? Ah, okay. There's a little bit, a little bit more uh, hands. So build config is pretty useful thing that you, that you can how you can control actually your code that is code that is built uh, uh, your Java code, right? So that's like a file that's going to be generated during the build process. You can add attach some sort of like values in there during the build, uh, during the compile time, and then you can actually reuse them, so that's like a pretty useful thing. Email notifications. Sometimes when your build is finished, you want to receive the notifications from your build server, okay? Everything is finished, like, and for example, your QA can, can be started or whatever, or you have like failure builds, or you need to get the statistics of your nightly build. You can actually do the setup of it. It's it's like a tricky thing on a team city. You have to go inside your edge in, in, to the instance where the, your, your server is actually installed. You go to the config notifications, and in there is going to be like a bunch of the formats for different cases when the email is going to be sent. <laughs> that's that's an XMLs, and inside those XMLs you can actually edit, for example, a message text that is going to be sent, or you can edit the list of the uh, artifacts that's going to be attached to this email. So that's also pretty handy for you to use, like, whatever. Uh, okay, for for me, I've got four build configurations on my team city when I'm starting the project, mostly, and the first one is like the unit test. Uh, the triggers that I'm going to use for this one, every time I'm going to merge a new fee, anything I'm going to merge in the, into the new feature, into the feature branch, it's gonna trigger a unit test. So every time I'm gonna do a push or anybody on my team is gonna do a push 
to my to his feature branch, the unit test job is going to be triggered, and everyone will know like that he failed or he did not fail something like on the on his build. And every time you are creating a pull request from any branch to any branch, it's going to also trigger the unit test job and every and show what the results are. What it actually is going to run is going to run like JUnit tests and lint inspections. Like JUnit, it means that it's only Java. We are not going to do the, any instrumentation tests or whatever. Like so, and of course, the, the, we're going to see whether somebody is uh, killing our project like, <laughs> with, 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 with some unuseful Android code. Uh, after that, like uh, we gonna receive like a test report and lint report, and uh, cancel pull request. Pull request if tests are failing. Of course, if you have the like, pull request in that case, merging, uh, merging merge job is gonna be uh, triggered every time like feature branch, the pull request and feature uh, from uh, from feature branch to dev or on the and from hotfix to master. Uh, it's going to run all UI tests with Spoon on my the old connected devices, and after that, it's going to send the test report. Also, in that case, what I consider really good to have is to have separate uh, UI tests uh, uh, setups, uh, for example, uh, sets. What, what I actually mean, because sometimes you don't want to run all the UI tests that you actually have. Sometimes for merging of the feature, you can have like a really small run in that situation. So if you, if you have, as we had like an TomTom, like two hours run, you don't want to have all these two hours run for a merging feature. You have like 40 to 45 minutes run and maybe the full run is going to be, is going to happen only after you are doing the actual, after you're doing like the nightly build. It's, it's 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 easier in that case, and of course, like if we, if you broke some tests, like please do the cancel of the uh, pull request. Uh, also, like nightly build is something that is scheduled on your dev branch. It's running every night. It's running all your tests that you're actually having, uh, like for your project. <laughs> okay, like that, like. And after that, it's going to send you a test report, like we email, and um, notifies uh, with uh, notifies all team with, with the results, of course. Also, what is good to have, if you are using some things like a GitLab or whatever, you can actually create an issues in your uh, your tracker whenever your nightly builds is fi is failed, and have somebody in the team who is actually going to be responsible for all those failures. So. He he's going to come like at work, and the first thing he's going to check whether we have a failure. And if we have a failure, he's going to be responsible for fixing this failure or understanding what actually failed. There is also a good thing like debug deployment and release deployment. Like first of all, every time you go in to finish the feature, you want to have a debug build, right? And but. You don't want to have a procedure of uh, building it like manually and then deploying to every device or sending it to a QA or whatever. There are a lot of good services that, very, that you can use for actually delivering those debug, uh, debug builds. Uh, I'm personally using DeployGate. It's like a pretty awesome and it also has a good integration with Gradle. So every time you're going to have like a, an APK build, you can just uh, uh, run a Gradle task and is going to deploy it to your devices that actually logged in, uh, in the, with this account. Also, it's it's paid, uh, but you can actually use a free version with one account. It's pretty tricky. Not, not pretty tricky. You're using one account for all the team, but it's useful to use. Okay, the, the build version like applique, upload upload the public APK. I'm talking about it and okay. Um, bum, bum. That was. There is a release deployment. Also, I don't think that you want to do uh, releases manually every time you're going to do like a Google Play release, right? Uh, so there is uh, an open API, API from Google that you can use actually for doing the automatic uh, automatic release. Uh, so that's also like pretty pretty cool, I think. Uh, what it what it can actually give you, it uh, actually gives you a possibility to 
to, to do the release, but not only the APK, it can give you also a possibility to release all the information regarding that build. So you can, you can put the screenshots, you can put the, uh, informa the descriptions and all that stuff. So that's pretty handy, you can use it. So I'm talking a little bit of the deploy, yeah, like the debug deployment. It's also like a pretty much uh, other things that you can use. For example, Fabric, I think, also supports the same thing. Uh, it has the same functionality as deploy gate. So whatever you can use it. I'm using deploy gate. Uh, that's how. That's actually how the code for deploy gate actually looks like. What you're gonna have at the end the username and the, the pro, uh, and the, the the token that you're going to use uh, for authentication and deploy gate for actually deploying your Android APK. Uh, then the release deployment. Uh, okay, so th there is a Gradle way that's pretty easy. Also, you can wrap the um, you can also wrap the uh, API for of the Google developers like, of the that Google gives you for Google Play like on your own, but it's already there. I've provided the link inside of the, uh, the presentation. You can take a look at it. Um, Actually, that's how the, the, the guys from Triple Company actually provide it with you, and that's actually how the uh, code looks like inside Gradle. So you've got like a mail account, you've got like a file, like it's gonna, it can be like a P, PK12 file, or it can be like a JSON that contains all the information for the authorization. And then you can select also the track, uh, like whether you want to do the release alpha, beta, or or production, and also if you want to upload the images, you have to put it as this flag as true. And okay, what good to have Slack integration, whatever you can do the Slack integration on your on level of your Team CD, you can do the Slack integration on level of the uh, version control system. You can have them both. That's good. Nexus, what is Nexus? How many of you guys knows what the Nexus is? Actually, a lot of the things should know, a lot of you should know about it because Nexus is actually a J Center. <laughs> Nexus is like a memory repository that you can uh, that you we are using every day. It's also good to have your own Nexus because sometimes you can reuse some of the uh, some of the things that you use during your development. You can create your own Nexus and then deploy your own libraries over there. So like and not building them every time you need to do, and only touching them when you need to do this, those changes. So it's pretty pretty cool thing. So summary, use correct tools. Please don't, don't use TFS if the whole team is actually using Mac. And make your test fast. Uh, automate, build, deliver everywhere. Use good VCS. It was one more time regarding TFS. <laughs> use cross-use uh, cross-platform tools. In that case, like please don't use .NET like for Appium. I don't think that you're going to have that, but sometimes it it happens in in outsource. It, it can happen. It can happen everything. And like give Gradle a chance. It it has like a lot of powerful tools that can help you during the. Uh, CI and uh, during the CI process in your team and automate your release cycle. Questions? Okay. Hi, Saken. Uh, thanks for the speech and mentioning Spoonfy, Spoon plugin. You um, have mentioned uh, code coverage. What actually do you use for checking code coverage in your APKs? Uh, I, I was using Jocko uh, Core, I think. Previously, in my, in my current application, we didn't use the code coverage because we were not there yet. We were doing the changes in our architecture. Uh, we were. I, I was planning to use Jocko. Uh, they, uh, they. That's like a pretty, pretty good tool, I think, for you, uh, for you, for, for you than this, uh, for for taking a look at the code coverage. But I don't know exactly whether it's going to support the UI tests or not. That's what the question. So. Okay, thanks. Hi. Thank you for presentation. I have two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, the first uh, about uh, uh, what do you use for UI tests? You mentioned Calabash. What about Espresso? Uh, yeah. 
Espresso is really good. <laughs> like I actually use three different frameworks. Like I used Express, Espresso, uh, I used Calabash, and I used uh, Apio. Of course, Espresso is much better because you have this concept of the idling resources. That's pretty cool. You don't have to put those like weights every time. <laughs> and like Vitaly told, uh, that thread sleep is not going to work. Like if you're going to use the cross plot for uh, like. Uh, J to Objective C for class cross platform development. So, Espresso is pretty cool. So, I, I would rather go for Espresso. Uh, the second question is about do you use some kind of uh, uh, fabric for of test devices? Uh, something like uh, you mean you, you mean some test cloud for for real mm, devices where no. you have your UI tests executed or mm. something alternative. Personally, every time I'm starting a new project, we have some sort of reference devices, right? And we are trying to buy those reference devices, and I'm building the farm inside the team. So I've got the, the local machine that's running all those devices. Uh, by I did uh, I, I using it like this. We tried with Calabash uh, because actually the Calabash was developed by Xamarin Cloud, right? So you can actually connect it. If you're writing, uh, writing the test on the Calabash, you can actually use the Xamarin Cloud, but they are really strictly enforce you to use the Calabash and you, sometimes you want to use Espresso, right? I think Google, uh, Google device farm is pretty cool, but there are some things that you have to know. First of all, there are some you can test it, but there are like two things. First of all, some uh, some of the plans actually involve running your tests, Espresso tests, only on the emulators. <laughs> uh, so you need to know whether your tests are actually running on the emulators or your tests actually running on the devices. Uh, so I, but personally, I would go I would go with a Google product. <laughs> yeah, there is also Amazon test cloud. Yeah. yeah. I, I know, but I hope that they're going to do better a little bit on this. Uh, hi. You showed us a function of mapping version name onto version code. So the question is what benefit it gives us? Mm -hmm. Could you please repeat? Sorry. Uh, you showed us some function of mapping uh, version name onto version code. Uh, version name to version code? OK. Of what uh, benefit it gives us? The, the first of all, as long as you ha you're using some sort of convention for version naming, uh, like every time uh, every time you go into uh, see the ver the version name, uh, like it's it's going to give you some information, right? Uh, then uh, why I'm using this one because actually your version code, right? Uh, is go have to be uh, uh, your version contains of several parts for so major version minor version and uh, bug version right so every time you go in to do the fix of some sort of uh, uh, every time you go in to add some feature or you're going to do a bug fix you go in to update a specific counter in that case and you can get the information like uh, the same on level of the version code or the version name because you can see from the version code okay it's going to be like nine nine okay just a sec i will go back here <laughs> Okay, as you can see, uh, my version uh, my version code in that case, like uh, I will know if if the per if 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 the greatest one like is going to be uh, like for example five or six. I know the number of the release in my case, right? If the minor version. Uh, is going to be um, 10 or 11. I know the amount of the features that I have released in that case. And the bug version is something uh, that I will know how many hotfixes I actually made during the development. So it's give me a lot of information like on what what has actually happened during the build. Actually, you can you can use them, they can be different in that situation, right? So you, 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 don't, you don't have to bind all those two concepts. For me, it was like pretty handy. Yeah, true. You, 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 you can do you, you can do it another way, but in in, in that in that case they are all like bind to one concept. Actually, they are telling you the same information, the version name and the version code. Like, 
of course the Google Play is using it, but sometimes you can take a look at it from the version code, whatever. Yes, but in fact, uh, if you, for example, go into deliver a debug build, debug build, you are using the deploy gate, and you deliver the new feature, right? So you have to do the update. How the update is going to happen? You have to, in order for deploy gate to understand that actually your APK is going to need to be updated, so it can so. It can do actual update of your application, not actually removing and installing it, but actually updating it. It, it need to have the increase of the version, uh, version code in that case. Hmm? Okay. Uh, actually, I've got a comment about the test coverage and uh, UI tests and unit tests are perfectly merged uh, in one coverage report. And SonarQ, for example, uh, supports this uh, feature. And I would like to ask you about the uh, emulator on uh, Team City because we are using Jenkins. And it is pretty tricky to start up emulator on Jenkins. What is about in Team City? <laughs> okay, like uh, that's. Uh, for a team, uh, for a team city, uh, what we what we were actually using, we were using the first of all how you are running Jenkins. Are you running Jenkins uh, on some sort of Amazon instance, or you're running Jenkins on a real machine? Uh, yeah, and that's actually like some sort of a virtual machine, right? So we can tell it. Okay, so in that case, the emulator is going to cause you problems. Like you don't, you don't want to have that. Yeah, yeah, that's a problem. You cannot do that. You can't do that. That's why I'm actually having like the physical machine for all my devices, and we actually had a physical machine where where the emulator was running. So I tried several times with uh, with this uh, with, with the emulator on the virtual machine. It's it's really really not that cool to use that. I would not recommend to use it this this way. I would recommend to whether go to some sort of like device farms like Google Test Lab or Amazon, or to use like your own uh, physical machine with connected devices and, or emulator. Yes, like if as long as you use it, you, you as long as you're using spoon, yeah, that's that's pretty easy. Okay, one, two, three. So a couple of questions uh, from me. First one is uh, why not to use for version name like uh, Git revision number? It would be super helpful to uh, see. Uh, which version do you have currently installed? You, you, you mean to use like the git, the, the hash of the commits? Yes. That's a cool thing. Yeah, it's actually pretty useful for a release part. Yeah, I quite agree that it could be, could be really handy to using it. Yes, so so for, for everyone, I, I suggest to do this. A second question is uh, what, uh, maybe you are using uh, anything else than Lint, so any other code analysis tools? Mm, uh, Actually, yeah, like from my side, I was using only Lint. I didn't use like any other like state code, uh, code anal analysis for the Android code. Okay, so for everyone else, I suggest to add uh, find bugs and uh, PMD, which stands for pretty much done. So those uh, code analysis tools uh, do checks like uh, final, which you mentioned. Your uh, I, th I think there actually there is like a, a plugin on the IntelliJ IDEA that also checks for that without yeah. uh, without fine bugs. But uh, if if you add it as a build uh, Gradle script uh, during build, it will fail if you, for example, forgot to add final field. And a final question is about Team City. So we, we are using Team City. You mentioned that it's free. So is it free if you set up it on your own build machine or yes. they offer? Okay, yes, so that's uh, that's free. You can set up three build engines, and you can set up them whatever whenever you want to. So it's free. Okay. So uh, I was researching build uh, tools also, and uh, Team City is a good choice if you have your own build machine. If you don't have one. I suggest to use a body build, which is very popular now, which uh, already released. It has all the stuff you mentioned in uh, which Team City has. So, for example, you can just uh, mm, like 
uh, go to your branch config and turn on or turn off any uh, flavors which you want to build. You can turn on, turn off any uh, G-Unit test or unit tests. Uh, there is uh, out of the box uh, Git support with checks, so you will not be able to merge pull requests if uh, your build failed. And there is uh, delivery and logs. So uh, for everyone who are using, uh, who don't have a build machines, I suggest to use bodybuild.com. Thanks. Thank you.